right. Here we go. Thank you to the powers that be. They were gracious with us today because we are live on Instagram with Charles, Shaka Wade, and Henry Noel, uh, respectively, two investment professionals who are going to be talking about BFF and BII's investment approach, as well as um, all types of things related to their experience and the funds specifically. Um, so I'm going to welcome everyone to this Instagram Live. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Onyx Ramirez, and I'm the Senior Communications Manager with Black Farmer Fund. I'm so excited to be here um, with everyone, with Shaka, the Investment Director for BFF, and Henry Noel Jr., the Investment Director at BII. We're going to get started in just a minute with introductions, but for folks that are just joining, we invite you to drop in the chat where you're joining from, your name, your pronouns, as well as your favorite fruit or vegetable. Um, I'd love to hear from Shaka and Henry what your favorite fruit or vegetable is while we get started. Oh, okay, I'll uh, take advantage of the opportunity to let everyone know that my favorite fruit uh, is is the pawpaw that I had in uh, Jamaica when I was there a few years ago, and uh, it just blew my mind. Amazing! So, uh, I'll yeah. never forget. Pawpaw, it. I've never had it. How about you, Henry? Nothing as as extravagant as that. I'll I'll stick with the mango. <laughs> okay, I see someone in <laughs> the chat is also seconding the mangoes. <laughs> so we got some mango lovers. Definitely Caribbean fruit yeah. lovers um, in the house. I feel the same way. I feel like. I'm a mango strawberry kind of person, one of the two. They're they're both good for me. Um and let's let's um get started. I think while folks are beginning to join, I'm just going to start by sharing the intention of this Instagram live which is really to talk about investment, specifically more non-traditional investment approaches that center community and social justice and that place an emphasis on supporting BIPOC communities as well. Both Black Farmer Fund and BII, uh, which stand for Black Farmer Fund and Boston Impact Initiative, provide great examples of non-traditional investment opportunities and approaches. And so we're excited to bring this group together to folks who have extensive experience in both areas, Shaka and Henry, uh, here to this conversation, and I'm excited to lead it. Uh, for those of you who may be aware or may not be aware, earlier this month, BFF announced the launch of BFF Fund 2.0, and that is our new integrated capital fund that will support Black farmers and food actors in the Northeast. And BII has also recently launched a new integrated capital fund to support social enterprises and community-owned and controlled real estate to prevent displacement in Massachusetts and the Northeast. So um, I wanted to follow this announcement with a discussion that dives more deeply into why this is so important and why investing in these kinds in these kinds of funds is is so valuable. Um, I also want to put in a disclaimer that this IG Live is for educational purposes only and is not an offer to solicit notes. So for more information about each organization's offering documents, I'm going to link to the organization's websites that will have that information. My colleague Sonia is actually going to drop those in the chat. So um, be on the lookout for those. We are so excited for this discussion that's going to take place and even more excited to be joined by two individuals with such deep knowledge and expertise in these areas. So I'm going to start by introducing y'all properly. Um, Shaka Wade serves as the investment director for Black Farmer Fund. He previously held roles at JP Morgan, Lehman Brothers, and Citigroup, where he originated, structured, and distributed a range of credit solutions for private equity firms, hedge funds, and asset managers. Originally from New Paltz, New York, Shaka enjoys husbandry, gardening, and backpacking, and he is passionate about leveraging his finance experience to support food entrepreneurs in their efforts 
to improve the health and sustainability of community food systems. Shaka also holds an MBA from MIT and a BS from West Point, no big deal. Um, Henry Noel um, serves as the investment director for the Boston Impact Initiative okay. Fund and is focused on the intersection of impact investing, economic justice, and building resilient inner city communities. Prior to BII, Henry co-founded Haiti Venture Impact Partners, and he has over 20 years of experience um, evaluating investment opportunities, structuring securities, raising capital, and financing businesses of growth. Henry is an alum of the Impact Investing Program at Oxford University, said business school, and he holds an MBA from the Zarb School of Business at Hofstra and a BA in Business Administration from Atlantic Union College. So also just calm, calm conversation in the room with two big giants from the investment world. Um, and thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. So um, let's get into the questions. Let's get into the questions. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> so um, I want to start off by asking you both, can you share a little bit about how does traditional finance see investing? And can you also explain maybe how BFF and BII's approaches to that differ from traditional funding vehicles? Um, I'd <laughs> like to go first, I guess. Uh, so uh, when I think of uh, traditional funding vehicles, I think of stocks, mutual funds, exchange traded funds, CDs. Uh, these are fundamentally different from what we're doing at Black Farmer Fund. Uh, traditional vehicles are fundamentally different in that they are transactional for the most part. They're often liquid and tradable publicly on uh, exchanges. And you don't always know what's going on behind the scenes. If you dig deeper, you can find out. But it's, it's really about an extractive relationship typically. And so uh, first and foremost is uh, a returns objective. Whereas what we're doing is mission oriented, it's impact investing, and it's very focused on or, uh, various types of returns. So not just economic return, not just financial return, but rather uh, community, environment, uh, all of these types of returns are, are placed ahead of uh, just strictly financial returns. And so um, at, at Black Farmer Fund, we, we offer non-traditional funding vehicles. The investments are grassroots, mission-based, as I mentioned, impact-oriented. Um, and they are private and longer term from three to 10 years, typically. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a very different world. Um, and investors going into it uh, um, have to be of the mindset or should be of the mindset that they want to improve the world, basically, or improve, uh, you know, invest alongside of their values versus in conflict with their values. And that's, that's what comes first Thank you for so us. much for that, Shaka. Yeah. Definitely echo a lot of what Shaka said from the standpoint of um, – Typical financial institutions, what they're looking at is maximizing returns. They're focused on the, the financial aspect of their investments. Um, we are an impact investment fund. What that means is we're looking beyond just the financial aspect of companies. And we're really looking at, you know, what does this company contribute or how do they interact with the community um, on a social standpoint, you know, from a social perspective, from an um, environmental perspective, how do they interact with the with the world at large. And, you know, it's, it's really important and we're an impact first fund. So we actually have that as our first lens is how do we, uh, are these companies contributing, contributing both to, against society and to the environment. And then after that, we're looking at, does this company make sense from a financial standpoint? Do they have some financial um, prospects? It's, it's important um, as Shaka made the distinction that when you're taking into account other things other than just financials, you really are in tune with what is it that the community is looking for? What is it that enriches our community? And what is it that adds more value? Um, beyond just being an impact investment fund, we really take the position of how do we build, and when I say we, BII, 
how do we build financial, social, and political power in communities that we're looking to, to, to affect? How do we build that in black and brown communities? And how do we help them um, continue that from a generational perspective? You know, so we all know of the um, generation wealth gap or the wealth gap that exists right now. And in the Northeast is particularly strong. What we're trying to do is support entrepreneurs of color and really give them the, the opportunity from a financial perspective to, um, to reap the benefits of you know, their entrepreneurial spirit. And by supporting their businesses, again, helping uh, reduce that wealth gap as much as possible. Mm. I'd love to, and you can tell me you know, if, how, how we're able to answer this, but I'd love if y'all could share like, what are specific things about the investment approach that differ so specifically at BII and BFF? I know that you mentioned, you know, really focusing on improving the world. That's the kind of investment that we are aiming to make and something that's mission driven and can, you know, map, instead of maximizing returns, which is typically what investment is going to see. But are there like differences and how, how do you go about doing that? Um, in terms of action? Sure. Um, well, we've got a fantastic board and we've also at Black Farmer Fund got an independent investment committee and it's comprised of uh, 10 people who are either farmers or food business owners um, who have a variety of uh, experience across the Northeast states. And so we've got people on the ground in the communities doing grassroots uh, advocacy and who bring the experience uh, that uh, is relevant to the investments we're making. And so they make all the decisions uh, for the most part. Uh, the investment team, we do due diligence and present uh, investments to the investment committee but they're the ones making the decisions and they're the ones closest to the uh, communities on the ground. And so uh, we're very um, happy with uh, the way we've arranged that. And so they're, you know, looking to uh, provide capital credit uh, and training to, um, to uh, all of the uh, food businesses and farmers that we uh, that we work with at, at BII, we too look to you know benefit from the wisdom of our investment committee, and they make recommendations. Um, after we've made a present a presentation to them, um, they make recommendations to our board, and our board has a final yes no vote on a particular deal. So that's the governance aspect of it. From as far as approach, our investment approach, it's really one of relationship. We try to um, approach the entrepreneurs from a relationship standpoint. We don't rely on credit scores or things like that, traditional um, metrics that some banks or some others may use. Uh, again, because some of those things are have historically been used to weed out um, the target market that we're looking for, black and brown um, entrepreneurs, and keep us out of the game, if you will. So we don't look at credit scores. We don't look at... Um, the amount of collateral going into a transaction. After we've made an investment, we will take position on the collateral. However, that's not required to get into the investment. Also, many institutions have a two-year minimum um, or two-year minimum um, uh, time frame for the, for the existence of the company, or they'll take a personal guarantee on um, entrepreneurs' assets. All things that we try not to do or that we don't do simply because, again, we think that these are detrimental to the whole experience. Now, once we, because we take a relationship approach, we really get to know the entrepreneur and get to understand what it is they're trying to do. And um, at the staff level, we're really putting that into the memo and um, our investment committee trusts us enough to, once it reaches their level, they really are looking at how do we say yes? This, 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 um, our staff has de-risked this to a certain extent, and they've checked the impact of this, and it's worthy company. So how do we get to yes, as opposed to many firms where they're looking at how do we get to no? Um, so again, through de-risking more 
and through them asking us, well, have you looked at X, Y, and Z? And consider this aspect that you may not have in the past. Sometimes they do send us back to get a little more information. But the real, again, the, the objective is how do we get to yes, then the recommendation is made to our board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that, Henry. I'm really hearing this aspect of shifting these practices, not only to make it like a more enjoyable experience for the investee, but also to really come to terms with the fact that there has been intentional like divestment from these communities and they have not had the opportunity to reap the same benefits from resources at large, like in traditional finance and funding. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that, you know, that, well, so we know that there is definitely, you know, systemic um, issues at hand at play with regard to um, black and brown entrepreneurs not getting their fair share of, or not getting a share in many cases uh, of the financial picture, um, access to finance. So our position is, how do we reverse that? Um, specifically, we look at, uh, as far as from an industry standpoint, we look at, well, what are some of the industries that are not well diversified? And how do we support founders who are in those spaces? And how do we support um, developing those spaces more so that we do bring some color to those spaces? How do we look at companies that are really providing pathways for growth for new entrants into those spaces. So is it, uh, do they have programs with young people that they're you know, training and things of that nature so we can be in more of, the, in, in bigger spaces um, further down the line as far as industries that are not well diversified. So very key um, and interesting aspects that we really look for in, in the relationships that we're getting into with these companies. Mm -hmm. And this is really about strengthening the whole food system. Shaka, can you tell me a little bit like how that lands for you and where that sits for BFF? Sure. Uh, so in, you know, in an effort to uh, strengthen the food system, um, uh, you know, another consideration that we, uh, that we have in our uh, vehicles is low interest rates and patient capital. So, <clears throat> Um, you know, typically in, in traditional finance, uh, you know, everyone's trying to extract as much interest as possible from, from each uh, transaction. And so um, what that winds up doing is basically making the rich richer and the poor poor, right? Like the, poor, the, 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 the folks with less access to capital, uh, you know, are basically funding, <clears throat> funding the uh, the wealth of people who already have tons of wealth. So we're trying to reverse that. We have low interest rates, patient capital. As Henry alluded, we have relationships. Uh, it's, you know, relationship driven, um, long term relationships where we're really trying to get people uh, into a, a better position rather than just trying to fund our own, uh, you know, operations with, uh, you know, excessive interest rates and, and impatient capital. Um, and we also rely heavily on our uh, technical assistance to make sure that uh, farmers and, and other uh, entrepreneurs have the tools that they need to be successful. So that could be bookkeeping support. It could be op you know, operational governance, legal support, um, you know, creating business plans and marketing strategies, all of these things go into consideration as well. And then uh, one of the most important points, of course, is uh, community connections. So, you know, building a network of folks that can rely on each other and repairing some of the damage that's been done historically, both pro publicly and privately, um, and signed off on by the government. So... Um, Thank you. That's, uh, I want to reinforce one point that Shaka just made from the standpoint of technical assistance. It's so important that, you know, that um, it's not just financing. It's not just investment, uh, you know, f financial investment. There is a lot of work that goes into working with entrepreneurs on the front end before the investment's made mm -hmm. and continually while the investment's going on continuing to try to add value and to try to, um, whether it's through business development, whether it's through support systems from an accounting perspective, as Chaka mentioned, or whatever the case may be, but tr again, truly trying to um, 
embrace the company and put our arms fully around them so we can create the best potential outcomes for them. That technical assistance piece is very important because a lot of times um, the money's not just, just the money's not enough. And you might get money just enough to fail. Um, but if I give you the money plus the backing, plus the assistance, and I open up my network to you and we're working in this together to the extent possible, it's a different picture and it's a different relationship. And potentially, we believe it's a different outcome. Thank you so much. This is so powerful. For folks who may just be joining us, we're here with Investment Director for Black Farmer Fund, Shaka Wade, and Investment Director for Boston Impact Initiative, discussing, Henry Knoll, discussing social justice investing to build community power. Um, next, I'd really like to ask you both to explain what the difference, for some of the folks who may not be as familiar with a lot of this lingo, what's the difference between a donation and an investment and it's specifically as it relates to like philanthropy and impact investing. So my take on that is when, when people hear about uh, philanthropy, they think of, you know, fancy galas where people, you know, write big checks to organizations that are, um, you know, spending it on uh, certain programs and things like that. And then when they think of investment, they think of, uh, of you know, due diligence and, and things like that. But they're, they're not so different in that we want both to, to happen, right? Like you think of donation as, as something where you're not necessarily getting back your investment in terms of actual uh, financial capital, but what you're getting, you're still getting impact. Um, and uh, an investment, you typically expect to get your you know money back in one way or another. I'm uh, sorry, in, in financial form. So um, that's that's probably the big difference uh, between those two. But uh, I'll uh, sure. I'll let Henry no, 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 no. Yeah, I, I, check I, me on I, that. I I see it very much the same way in that. Okay, so we're a place based fund. So. What that means simply is we're very interested in a ground up strategy and working in a specific place because we think that that way we can really work with other members of our network, other members of that ecosystem to you know work on problems together. Um, I, I started there because what happens is members of that ecosystem is everyone all the community members in addition to, you know, the different um, organizations working in that community. And if you are part of that community as a regular person, um, this is an opportunity, you know, there are opportunities for you to, who care about your community, to look after your community. And a lot of times, you know, Shaka mentioned, you think of um, big galas and the like. Well, not necessarily. You could also have just the everyday person really try to invest in their community, invest their time, invest their money, invest their talent. They can, they can you know, whether it's through a march, whatever the case is, um, there's ways to give to your community and to support your community. Um, beyond that, when I hear philanthropy, I hear of, you know, you, you, you basically are giving your money for whatever cause, for whatever, um, and expecting an impact of some sort. That gift is 100% gone. So it's 100% loss, if you will, um, from the standpoint of financially. Um, when you give in an impact investing type way, or when you use your philanthropy as impact as an impact investment, you're basically still giving that, but expecting to have a return of your capital. So you can give it again. And that cycle could continue. And so the impact that you're looking for is being done. And you have that money that's evergreen almost coming back to you so you can continue to give. And so I just, I like that model a lot better. Of course, I have a dog in the fight. I'm an impact investor. But the idea is that you continually are able to, um, that, 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 that gift is, is on an ongoing basis. Also, I'd like to add that since we're talking about impact, 
just for you know anyone on the call who's who's not as familiar with that term uh it's it's about intention so uh in contrast to avoiding something like i want to avoid investing in factory farms for example uh intention is about you know i want to make an impact uh and my financial return isn't the uh you know, main or only factor involved. Um, it's because uh, if you if you think of it as I need to make a certain return or else I'm not able to make an impact, then you're actually talking about resistance there. And what we want to do is have intention where you're maximizing your total return, which means financial, environmental, community, all these things. And so it's a it's a totally different intention. Yep. More so, outcome. Go ahead. Henry. No, I would say the, the, the and the, the best and the best companies, the best investments that I've made, are the ones where um, the impact is built in, and so the larger the company gets, the more impact you know that, that's 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 being um, generated from their activities. Um, it's not where the impact is a second thought or an afterthought. And at any point, they can, we'll, we'll leave that behind for, you know, it's hard times right now, or whatever the case may be. Um, so again, the best companies is when that impact is built into their business model. Mm -hmm. And I think this really segues well into the next question, but really what you all have me thinking of is like impact for who? The impact of this on me as the investor or the impact of this on the community and the earth and the wellness of this like system's ability to feed people and sustain itself and beyond food to function well. Um, and the next question that I really wanna get into is what is integrated capital? And what is that, what is the meaning of that for the work that each of these funds is doing? So social capital, cultural capital, in addition to anything else that may come up for you. Well, if we could start with social capital, um, which is, you know, one of the components of integrated capital, um, I'd point out that connection is everything. I mean, we're, we're social, you know, as, as people and at the root of all pain that's caused that people cause each other is a lack of connection. And so, um, you know, I, I, I can only hurt something that I feel no connection to. I mean, I can only allow myself to hurt someone that I have uh, no connection to or something that I have no connection to. So if that's, if that's the issue we're dealing with, what we want to do is help people feel connected. And so that means to people in the community, to the environment. Um, and if people are disconnected then they you know they don't feel seen they're hurt you know they withdraw and so our work begins with establishing and restoring connections that have been broken throughout the the history of uh you know the negative things that have happened uh to people um that we spoke to earlier um disenfranchisement and uh history historical discrimination and, um, and things like that. So we're trying to heal those uh, wounds of the past and that continue. But, uh, and, and, and then cultural capital, I'd say, is, you know, from the Black Farmer Fund perspective, has to do with education, knowledge, skills. Uh, for cultural capital to be effective, you need that social network. So social capital and cultural capital go together hand in hand. They're mutually dependent. And so that's an example of how integrated capital works. Um, you know, we want to make sure f folks have access to culturally relevant food, practices, traditions. Um, and then, you know, of course, you've got economic capital as another part of uh, integrated capital. And so... When people think of economic capital, it's more focused on monetary resources um, like money. And so that's, you know, necessary part of the world that we're living in. <clears throat> and so um, that's that's the third part of uh, integrated capital that comes to when, mind. When, when 
And, um, when we think of integrated capital, I think two things. Really. Um, of course, the first one Chaka mentioned is, you know, all the different types of capital that come into play. So political capital, you know, and we let political capital to our support. And what I'm thinking is the standpoint of integrated capital, again, not that our entrepreneurs have deficient, but they don't have some of the advantages that, that entrepreneurs may have or more traditional entrepreneurs may have. For example, I was watch, um, looking at a presentation recently and it showed um, the PayPal mafia. If you're not aware of who that is, the PayPal mafia is basically um, the, the PayPal, when it came out, the, the number of founders that came out of PayPal and, uh, and from you know, their success you know, ha included you know, people like yeah, um, Tesla, um, Elon Musk, and, and and many others, Steel, and you know, the founder of LinkedIn, and the founder of a whole bunch of the other companies. All of these guys knew each other from PayPal, mm -hmm. and they've con continued to invest in other companies and other companies where the founders look like them. And so it's networks and it's connections that they have through you know their circles. Um, so. Do our founders have these same types of networks and these same types of um, connections and things of that nature? Maybe, maybe not. In the cases where they don't, we want to serve as, granted, I don't have connections to Elon Musk or anyone else. <laughs> However, but I do want to extend to the extent possible my, my network to my entrepreneurs and make introductions. And so, same thing with our investment committee and our board. And so by us being involved with that entrepreneur, we're trying to extend and to really wrap our arms around them again and um, extend our networks and all the tips of capital that we have, the political capital that we may have um, in you know, getting a bill passed or whatever the case may be, um, the social capital and everything else. We want to extend all of that to that entrepreneur so they're not coming from a place of deficiency, but definitely have, are coming from a place of abundance. Mm -hmm. the, the, second, the second piece that we look at when we talk about um, integrated capital is more from a full spectrum of capital perspective in that there's um, different types of capital. So if we look at including grants, equity, debt, and all the other types of financing you could do, all of those are pieces of cap or, or, or capital. And if we include all of those into the equation or into a solution for a particular entrepreneur, we have much more tools, if you will, at our disposal to really help that entrepreneur move forward and add, add value to them. Because we can couple a, um, a debt investment with a grant and potentially at a different time in their trajectory, that company's trajectory, look at, look at you know, a line of credit or some equity investments. Again, we're not tied to just one particular type of capital there. We can look at all the different um, arrows in your quiver, if you will, as far as different types of capital that we can bring to bear for the success of one company. So that's another way that we look at integrated capital. Mm -hmm. Chuck, got anything you wanna add? Yeah, I'd add uh, that, uh, yeah, I'd echo what, what Henry said, and I'd also add that there's another layer that we see, you know, like um, uh, underneath, uh, you know, debt and, and that has to do with the structure of, of what we're offering. And so, um, you know, in some, in some cases you'll have, uh, you know, a starting farmer who uh, is not yet able to, uh, to make payments on a traditional loan. And so you might want to structure something that's uh, seasonal or profit linked. And so we've done that. Um, and, and sometimes other investment types like equity can solve that payment problem, but just having the flexibility to show, uh, to show them additional structures that might work better for them, such as an equipment lease or something like that, um, is, is something that we like to have the flexibility to do. Uh, with the folks yeah, that we work so with. Really, it feels like trying to make these these resources a lot more accessible as a way to, you know, think about growing your business and thinking about these as tools for growth exactly. and 
an addition of value rather than a very scary additional debt, which is what it can feel like sometimes for people is how, how am I going to pay this back or how am I going to get this money if, you know, I'm here, you know? Um, no, yeah, go ahead. Henry. As, as, as to that point, it's, you know, it's also working hand in hand with entrepreneur and making it a little bit less scary, the process. Um, understanding, you know, um, let's work on this, on these projections together and see how you will be able to um, pay this back. Let's see if you will be able you know, have the capacity to take this loan in the first place or if it's appropriate at this stage. Um, again, these are all tools. So at what stage is debt appropriate? Um, at what stage in your, in your company cycle is debt appropriate? At what stage is it equity that you need? And do you have the right type of growth trajectory for equity? Um, you know, having these kind of conversations with entrepreneurs really gives them a, a, a position for, of which they can really make an uh, uh, educated and um, a sound decision and not, not be, you know, overly stressed right. <laughs> as, right. as far as to go and and then you know um yeah. really you know again it's the relationship we're, we're we're in this together and we're in it all the way so let's figure something out let's see how how things are going to happen how things are going to shake out um and our goal is your success as an entrepreneur and really again that's where as shaka mentioned early on that's where the idea of non-extractive being non-extractive comes in um, traditional finance is going to look at you know maximizing financial return for the investor, not necessarily for the entrepreneur. If it works out that we both make out, great. But I'm looking out for the entrepreneur. I'm mean, sorry for, for for the investor. Whereas um, you know when we're trying to be non expectative we're really seeing okay. Well, how do we make sure that or how do we maximize return? for the entrepreneur and for the employees of the business, even if it means um, um, capping our returns in some instances with some of our products, that's what we do. We choose to cap our returns because at that point, we've made enough of a return for our fund to do well, for us to pay back our investors. And the goal is for you, Mr. and Mrs. Entrepreneur, to really maximize your business and your financial gain and the, the, that of the employees. And that's where we want to see the majority of, you know, the, um, the growth. We want to be as non-extractive as possible. Thank you both so much for really thinking about this from the perspective of both the investee, the investor, and the organization. I'd love to, for our last question that we've prepared, and then we're going to get into some Q&A. Um, so we've been taking questions in the chat and in the chat box um, for both. If you have questions, this is the time to submit them. Um, but we're going to get into the last question before we do that. It's really, how do we then determine what is a good investment? Um, and what different things do we bring into account, such as like the risk of the investment and for who? Uh, for this one, I'd like to focus on mm. fulfillment and joy, because I, I strongly believe that um, one has to align their values with their investments. And so um, most people, I think, are not doing that consciously, and they're unhappy about it. You know, just to give a small example, if I believe in kindness, but I keep making a decision to be unkind, then I'm not living according to my values and I'm not going to be happy then. And so a, a good investment, I think, is people really figuring out what matters and what is important and aligning their thoughts, words, and actions with those things that they find to be most important. So if you care about your community, your environment, it's, it's not a, uh, a zero-sum game where you know, we can all just act out of self-interest and we'll all be okay. And we see that, you know, with the environment and stuff and people are starting to, you know, uh, to uh, fix some of the things, you know, in the past, such as uh, d discriminatory practices and things like that. And so I think there is a shift going on right now.
right now where people are thinking less narcissistically about investment and they are um, really trying to make an impact. Like impact investing is really starting to take off and I think people will be happier for it. And so I think the right investment is really what makes you feel good. And so obviously you have to take care of your basic needs um, first. And after that, um, you know, folks, you know, should really uh, reflect inwardly and, and say, hey, look, this is what's best for my community, access to food, access to uh you know, capital to make things better in the community and for everyone around me, because we're all in this together. And so, um, you know, through your words, your thoughts, your actions, you can make a difference. And folks need to know that they can have an impact um, by, uh, you know, making investments that are values aligned. Um, and, and part of that is doing the due diligence to make sure that you know, whoever you're trusting to make those investments is doing the right thing. Um, but other than that, I think folks just really need to be aware that there's more to it than uh, strictly financial returns. And they need to prioritize uh, values such as community and environment. And from that, they will realize a good investment. A little bit of different buckets talked about um, a good investment for an individual. I want to talk about um, what does a good investment for us look like. Um, and, and for us, it's really, um, as I mentioned before briefly, it's really a company where the impact is built in, where, um, you know, the entrepreneur is very aligned with, or their vision is so socially minded. It's directly, it's, it's, it's directly challenging a, pro a problem that they've encountered and that they're, you know, coming to, um, to, to meet. And um, as they grow, so does their impact. And I think that, you know, as we look at investments, as far as what's a good investment or what's a strong investment versus what's a risky quote unquote investment, we also have to, um, you know, expand what, what we're thinking of when we, when we think of risk. What's the risk of this business not coming into um, existence? What's the risk of the impact that they could have made going missing or not being realized um, because we didn't make this investment? Uh, it's interesting, as we look through our um, investments or as we look at various investments, uh, we, we, we almost de we've designed a tool where it's almost like an equalizer. Sorry, I'm showing my age now, but well, where you have little levers uh, you know, for base and treble and session, you move them up and down. Um, we look at we look at investments in that way from the standpoint of you have your 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 levers for financial, you have your levers for social power, you have your levers for um, environmental impact, and a company might be doing extremely well as far as potential for financial gain, and very very poorly on their um, you know on the levels for social power or environment, environmental impact. That's not the company for me. But if there's a company where they're doing extremely well on environmental and social and not as well or not as strong as far as their potential for growth on the financial, how do I strengthen that? How do I bring some add value there so that um, I can take into account all of that impact that they're making on the levers that I care most about? And how do I support Support that company in a way that again is non non extractive. So when we look at risk, we were looking at a lot of different types of risk, and so when we're, we translate that into the type of company we want to invest in, it really is the company that is focusing on you know the levers that we care most about: that social power, that environmental impact, environmental resilience. Um, we want the company to be a sound business investment, but it doesn't have to be you know the unicorn as far as the um, financial return mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chaka, i also know that bff has its own tenets that the committee investment committee follows the bii that's a little bit of a difference with that um at bff the investment committee makes some decisions and at boston impact their investment committee makes um referrals Re recommendations 
yeah. recommendations. Exactly. Um, so is there something that the investment committee, you know, uses in order to determine for BFF? Yes, absolutely. So there's a set of investment guidelines that the investment committee uh, looks at when they're assessing the suitability of, uh, you know, establishing a new relationship with uh, an entrepreneur or farmer. And so, um, you know, they're aligned with the mission and the values of Black Farmer Fund. And um, it's not, um, it's not a, a set of rules that's as easy as checking a box in some cases. In some cases, uh, it, it requires uh, a broader view, kind of like the, the, uh, the base and the treble that, that Henry was talking about, where uh, you know, some parts, some, some of the investment guidelines may be weighed more heavily than others. And, uh, and you know, they, can re they can sometimes reach a decision with not everything being just as simple as uh, checking the box on the investment guidelines, but it is the compass for making uh, decisions. And so um, uh, it's very important to us, the investment guidelines. And, uh, and it's, a, as a, you know, it's a committee process though. And so it's well vetted um, mm -hmm. to make sure everyone's and comfortable. It, it also just feels like on both ends, so from what Shaka mentioned earlier, for a potential investor in either Boston Impact or BFF, and for the investee, it's really centering the investee and the needs of the community in both yep. ways. is totally different from, and how y'all said, like an extractive finance. Um, this has been incredible. I want to get to the audience questions because we actually have a lot of them. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get through all of these, but I do want to say is that um, if a question came up multiple times, maybe there's another way where we can share these answers. Um, how do you successfully fundraise at the moment? That's one of the questions that came in. I'd love to hear a little more what they mean by that in the chat, but if either of y'all want to um, answer. I assume that that's an entrepreneur asking about how they would fundraise as opposed to how I fundraise. Right. <laughs> so, so um, okay. I, again, it depends. It really depends on the business they're doing, what stage they're at, things of that nature. I'd say early on, it's important to understand what it is, first of all, what it is that you do and you know, where, you know, what sector you're in and things of that nature. Who's going to be interested in your story? Um, don't call BII if you're, you know, in, if you have a business that's in, you know, um, Utah. We, we, we only invest in, you know, the Northeast. The, so the idea that basically there is know who your investor is, know what it is that they care about, and really look to um, demonstrate from a milestone standpoint, here's where we are, here's why we've gotten to where we've gotten, basically explain the problem, solution, things of that nature. And then um, here's what, what an investment will allow us to, where an investor will allow us to get to and what our plan is from there. And I think that having a clear, concise story helps you get a little further in the game. Shaka, you'd like to add? We have a couple more questions. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, no, uh, Henry uh, did a, a great job. A lot of <clears throat> what Henry said is, is applicable to our process at Black Farmer Fund. Um, in order to get in touch with, with folks, we reach out through our network <clears throat> and we also ask folks to go to our website uh, and that's where the process begins. And then, uh, you know, we have a, you know, community led process that, that helps uh, decide, uh, you know, what direction we'll go in. Um, and the investment team does a lot of the due diligence work and all the presentation and everything like that. But in order to get funded, it's, you know, it, it helps if you've got a business plan of some sort, um, if you've got an idea of what you want to do and, you know, how you want to do it. Uh, we also have on staff uh, an expert with uh, technical assistance that can help with with things like that. Um, the investment team also has someone who uh, is uh, 
competent, very competent with uh, business plan creation and strategies for improving uh, businesses. So, so we've got, we've got resources to help people get there. Um, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, it's a process that's community based. And so um, not every uh, relationship goes the way everyone, you know, you know, an applicant or an interested business might think it might go, but um, it's definitely worth getting Thank in you. touch with Thank us. Thank you both. So I see my colleague Sonia dropping into the chat uh, relevant links for folks who may be interested in learning more about BFF or BII's investment approach. Um, you can head over to either of our websites and review the offering memorandums and learn all of the important details. Um, the next question we have is, are you focused in the Northeast only? Yes, Black Farmer Fund and BII, yes, yes. are both fo focused exclusively in the Northeast, which is comprised of Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Jersey, and New York, and Pennsylvania. So we, we exclude Pennsylvania or New Jersey, and we have only upstate New York. So Okay. Well, there you heard it here first, <laughs> folks. Um, let's move on to the next questions. Um, I really like this question. As a founder of a food startup, what are some numbers we should show on a daily or weekly basis to prepare ourselves for conversations with investors? A uh, daily or weekly basis isn't necessarily the, the yardstick. I mean, as long as you have, um, I have to, well, it also depends on how new you are. I mean, if you haven't, had a full year of operations, then it can be difficult to show uh, a history of, of, you know, of more than a year, whatever the case may be. But um, numbers that should be shown or available to, uh, to be talked about, you know, obviously top line numbers like revenues and things like that, um, costs are very helpful to have, but also some of the softer things like, um, how you treat your, you know, people that you work with or your employees or whatever the case may be, uh, what you do for the community. Um, so it's not all just about uh, financial results, um, but, you know, basic financial results such as the inputs to all of the, the products, the types of products, um, who the customer is, things like that are very helpful uh, to know when, mm. when speaking with Great. investors. Uh, I don't have much to add here. I'm not too much in the, in the food space. So. That makes sense. Um, okay. Last question that I want to ask is, let me pick a good one. <laughs> um, I'd love to know from Henry, and then on my end, I can actually answer for BFF because I have the answer here, Shavu. <laughs> but if I don't have any money right now, but would like to be in community with you all, are there other opportunities that I can engage with for, um, you know, with BII? Sure. So, so you started with the um, disclaimer, if I don't have any money. Uh, <laughs> but I will say that um, for community investors, we have, we have put the bar down um, um, pretty low so that most people are so that many people are too, we're trying to get as many people the ability to invest as possible mm -hmm. beyond that um to be in community with us um we're so i would answer that by saying that we're very much about the community we um we want to serve the community in everything that we do and therefore even if you're not in the same area or region with us by serving your community and by being active in your community, we all are in community together. It might sound corny, but it really is, you know, where I think it's powerful when we all are working towards a similar, um, a similar goal and a similar objective. And it really is, you know, what, what local businesses can I support? What local entrepreneurs can I support? Um, as far as with my dollar, just my spending dollar every day, as far as um, my necessities and things of that nature. And so all of those things really help, again, our small businesses and specifically our small black and brown businesses that depend on us um, thrive. Mm -hmm. Really uplifting this idea of everything is an investment, your time, yes, absolutely. your money, your voice, your physical person, all of these things are really- um, Absolutely. Yeah, really important. Um, in terms of the BFF, 
<laughs> your network. Um, we are always hosting virtual skill yeah. shares uh, available to community at different levels around like business planning, land acquisition, how to do different value added products with different partners such as Northeast Farmers of Color Land Trust, Soul Fire Farm and Farm School NYC. We also have community work days in the summer. So I would follow us, follow our newsletter, go to our website and sign up for our newsletter to learn about more opportunities to engage with us more directly. And we also are always looking to create spaces like this one for intentional conversations and stewarding relationships. We want you all to follow each other, ask each other questions in the chat and really um, start using this space too, to get to know each other more. Um, we are wrapping up, so I want to thank you both so much for your time, to both Henry and Shaka for the wisdom that you've shared today. I want to thank everyone who tuned in as well. Before we sign off, we also want folks to know how you can support either Black Farmer Fund or Boston Impact Initiative. You can visit our investment page or their investment page, which my colleague is going to drop in the chat to learn more about how you can invest or donate to both of our new funds. You'll also see detailed information on our investment approach and our offering memorandums as well as frequently asked questions. So thank you both. Thank you. And I hope you have the rest of your day. Yes, thank you. follow Boston Impact, follow Black Farmer Fund. <laughs> thank you everyone. See you. <laughs> Bye. All right.